Welcome to the episode of Cash or Trash that we're dubbing Tumblr Girls, because I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Today we're going to be looking at three craft kits that are kind of Tumblr-y? That's maybe Instagram Girls should have been better. I need to get those clicks. So here are the boxes we're going to be taking a look at. The first one is a Crazy Squeezies, which is a slow rising squishy kit that apparently looks really cool when decorated. But one of my biggest worries is the fact that we're using markers. Yes, markers. But on the box itself, it looks like there's a kind of gradient on the squishy itself. So this little grain is really curious to know whether or not we can actually replicate that gradient or if it's photoshopped. What's, what's, what's going on with all these hand motions? I am not sure. I'm gonna keep them down here. Next is my favorite hyper person, Jojo Siwa it. I am not going after the child, it is Nickelodeon. It is Nickelodeon. And this is a bath bomb and soap kit. I don't know why Jojo Siwa is related to soap and, and bath bombs. I'm just the grain, educate me if you know. But I'm curious to test this out. Big warning, by the way, if any of you know or have a Jojo Siwa makeup kit, please get rid of it ASAP because they found that there's actually asbestos in there. So get rid of it, it is dangerous. I don't know if there's asbestos in there. But I guess that's what I'm here for. I'm taking the risks so you grains can stay safe. And last but not least, it totally caught my attention because this is a slime candle kit. Yes, you heard me. Slime has finally become a candle. You don't just play with it, but now apparently you decorate with it. Which one do you have the least hope on? Which one do you think is going to be the biggest failure out of these three? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you click that button as well as the notification bell. Otherwise, I'm going to wave a sharp pointy tool at you. So make sure you do that. Don't make me threaten you. <laughs> Our first victim, I mean review, is Crazy Squeeze, Squeeze, squeeze Crazy Squeezies. Cannot talk today. No talking. Which is a slow rising craft kit. And this here, I spent $9.99 on it. And it was from Target. The interesting part is that it does say actual size on the box. So these are pretty big squishies. At no point on the box does it look like someone is actually squishing it. It just looks like they're gently holding it. But who am I to judge? What we need to do is see what we get inside. So before we go on any further, this here is exactly what we got in this whole big box. Dear companies, why do you feel the need to mislead us by making gigantic boxes with such tiny supplies? Don't you know? You're ruining the environment! So yeah, huge box, small items. Come on, be economical here. Here's what we get inside. The kitty cat squishy, slice of cake or pie, a droopy... You saw nothing! A drippy popsicle, five markers, pink, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Notice there's no black for details. And I guess the instructional sheet. The first question most of us have, is it actual, act actually, actually, the size? And the answer is pretty darn close. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. So, just so we're clear, I have brown hair. This hair here is reddish purpley. Not mine, but apparently you get free hair. Oh! One of the other things that I noticed about the squishies is that the mold itself doesn't seem to be even, because even the cat, the, the, the mouth of the cat is doing this. All right, enough, enough diddle, diddle dabbles, doodling, enough talking. Let's start with something really simple. Let's do the, let's do the popsicle. Wait, wait, we forgot to do the squish test, which is very important. So they claim that it's slow rising and the answer is, it is definitely most 100% not slow rising. It is so not slow rising that my eyes are just now closed. I don't know why I didn't open them back, but here we go. <laughs> How about the kitty cat? It's pretty quick, so not slow rising, but they smell pretty decent. And then the pizza cake, same thing, 
not slow rising. Another thing that worries me is that the surface is extremely smooth, which means that colors or paints and whatnots will have a harder time adhering to it. So let's do the doing. So I'm going to go ahead and mimic this design, which is the pink, purple, and blue, and see if we can get as deep colors as it's promising on the box. We all know they're a bunch of lions. But, but, but I could be wrong, which could happen sometimes. And in case you were wondering, the markers look like felt tips. So the first thing we need to do is isolate some of these areas to make sure that we get... Oh no. Oh no. So that we get sprinkles. Oh my good, this is... this is a dry marker. So we have an empty marker we definitely cannot use. The blue. The blue is dry. It's like it's not even trying. So now our popsicle has to be purple. purple, purple. You saw nothing again! You saw nothing! <laughs> so we're going to have to go with purple and green. Because I know that green works. But does purple work? I guess we'll find out. As I'm coloring it in, I did notice that the markers, other than the blue, are actually quite juicy. It is nowhere near the actual crispness and straight lines as the ones in the on uh, the ones on the box. And the, the stick is definitely quite flimsy, but we're getting close to the end. Alright, so here it is. It's had sufficient time to actually dry up. And does it squish any better? The answer is no. Are the lines crisp? No. Did it take up a lot of my time? Yes. Do the colors come out once it's dry? Let's find out. So just by squishing it like this, you can't tell. The colors that are on my fingers are from when I was coloring it. However, clean next time. And we can do the squish test like so. And as you can see, the color didn't come off. So unless you're a squishy snob, for $10 you are getting three whole squishies. So technically it is cheaper than most squishies that you would buy anywhere between $5 and $10 each. And you do get an activity. If you don't like the markers, use your own fabric markers. So even though a huge part of me would love to, throw it in the trash! I think for $10, three squishies and a potential activity if you're not a squishy, squ squishy snob. This would be worth your catch. This little buddy is going to go into my squishy unmakeover bin. Get ready for that. Next we have Jojo Siwa's bath bomb and soap making kit. The interesting thing about this box is that the actual soaps and bath bombs seem like the actual products, unless they were made by another kit. So they're not photoshopped on there to seem fake. Although the last time I did Jojo Siwa's hair hair kit. Pat, can you come two seconds? What do you think? You look stupid. I look stupid? You look like a four-year-old kid. <laughs> no, I don't look cute. No. That was that was quite the experience. I'm pretty curious to try this one out. Let's see what we get inside. We get baking soda, citric acid, soap cubes, sodium chloride, also known as a little bit of grains of salt. Three scented colorants, let's check them out. Green fragrance, which smells like candy, just like candy, like sugar. Pink fragrance, like strawberry. And last but not least, blue, which I think is supposed to mimic blueberry, but it just smells like sugar. A little scoop. Soap molds in the shapes of bows, stars, and hearts. Gift bags and gift bag tags. Wow, I actually said it right. A bow sleeping mask. You know, at least she is on brand. My, my hair, my, my hair is in the way. She's on brand. And the bath bomb maker, which is pretty unique. I've never tried a bath bomb maker. Except for that machine once, that was a nightmare. And the little gimmick seems pretty straightforward is when we put the powder inside, we're just going to kind of Smush it down with this. So according to the instructions, we're going to be putting one scoop of salt, three scoops of citric acid into a mixing bowl, and then some colorants to change the color. Once we mix and mash for apparently two minutes, we can now add the baking soda. Well, this this gimmick here to mix is a load of salt. All right, we're gonna have to go in manually. 
Just to be clear, I was supposed to be getting purple, but instead, for some weird reason, our mixture turned green. And I didn't use green because green is on this side. All right, this is weird. So my mixture went from being green to being blue, but it is extremely dry. According to the instructions, if it's too dry, I just need to add one drop of colorant until it holds itself. Did I ruin my fingers for the next few days because I had too much colorant on there? Most definitely. So let's keep mixing it. Alright, so here we are about 30 drops later and this seems to be the right consistency to hold itself. So let's do the doing. They said to use a spoon, but nobody tells me what to do. And they said to put the entire mixture inside. And now to squish it in and twist. And we gotta leave it for a minute. A few moments later. Alright, so it's been in there for about three minutes. Now it's the moment of truth. I knew this gimmick was too good to be true and I knew something right away was wrong with these fragrances because they were kind of sticky. It really almost feels like there's candy in here. I'm trying to fish it up. Come outside! There we go. So, much like a lot of the other molds, this one is not thought all the way through. For those of you who feel compelled to say, But JK, you're doing it wrong! The answer is no! Let me make a second mixture, put less of the actual drops, and do attempt number two. Maybe I did it wrong, but now that I know that these drops are sticky, I'm going to put a lot less. And here we are at attempt number two. I put a lot less of the extra, because it was still pretty dry initially, but... There we go. It would be appreciated if craft kits actually gave us the exact instructions. Off we go. All right, so here we are one minute later and... I knew this was too good to be true. Alright, since we still can't get a bath bomb, let's do the test anyways and see how it does in the water. Don't say, I didn't tell you so. So the biggest piece I have is this one over here. Let's dunk it into the water and see the reaction, because I have some pretty high hopes. Let's take a quick look at the commercial in which they put the bath bomb in it and how much it fizzes. How cool does this look? That's my expectation. That's pretty cool. Hang on. Before we get a little too impressed, there is something that worries me just a little bit. The color that comes in this kit stained everything I touched. So I'm really curious to know whether or not this bath bomb here would stain my finger. Let's find out. Let's soak it for a few seconds. 12 seconds later. And the answer is yes. So this kind of bath bomb colorant is not made for bath bombs. As you can see here, there's a huge difference between the part that's soaked in the water and the part that's not. And just to let you know, yes, I did try multiple times. And now for the soap part, I followed the instructions by taking some soap cubes, melting it for about 13 seconds. But this time I skipped their colorant because I just got the stain off of everything and I did not want to deal with it. Now we're pouring it into the mold and putting it in the freezer. So here we are, moment of truth. Time to unmold and see. Usually soap is pretty standard. It's very easy to make it. Now you're peeking. He's following me. You okay? He's all right. And unmolding it. Oh, that is, there we go. He's our wonky soap. And of course the soap itself smells like soap. And then I made the little star circle thing. Pretty standard. Companies really have to mess up to mess up glycerin soap, so I didn't expect it to perform poorly. You thought it would? He knows things I don't. Are you smarter than me? Oh, he knows. Am I smart? <gasps> he knows! How dare you call me not smart! Bring your feathery butt up here. I wanna see your butt, now. Did you just hit me? He just hit my back. We're supposed to be friends, you know the attitude on this one, I tell you. And so now the big question is, is this worth your cash or does it go in the trash? 
Even though it had sealable bags, half of the kit just doesn't work. The bath bombs. <gasps> How dare you hit me? How dare you? I'm just the person who was trying to make some video and then you mistreat me. You don't care? With that said, this kit for me goes straight in the trash. And now we have a slime candle kit. When I picked this up, I honestly thought that the slime itself was something that we could burn like a candle. But then when I came back home, I realized that the box said, safe LED candles. Which logically makes sense. This box is advertised for six and up. So you don't necessarily want an open flame around six and up. It's just this little grain was thinking adult wise. I want to burn some slime! Right bird? And this kit cost me $14.99, which makes it the most expensive kit we are testing today. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. If we look at the review on Target, it has one star. Mind you, it's one rating, but still, I'll take it. Because the salt loves to come out and play. And the biggest complaint about this review is that there's not enough material to actually make all the candles. Guess there's only one way to find out. And that's by seeing what we get inside. Well, hello, Christine. What you doing here? All right, seriously, what is up with this company? Why am I getting an extra, extra order of hair? Ew! Ew! That is, that is not my, that is not my hair. It is way too thick to be my hair. I have really thin hair, not thick black hair. Four candles. Do they work? One, two, three, four. We also get a bunch of decoration, either in flowers, unicorns, fairies, and, and all all that stuff, all the tumbler stuff. And of course, what slime without glitter? Clear glue and some sodium. Oh, and we also get some sticker sheets, which I have to admit are pretty cute and would make some really cool resin things. So as the instructions instructed, because that's what they do, I added 10 teaspoons of warm water and then one level spoon of sodium. I stirred that shit up. And then in the next cup, another 10 spoons of water and about three spoons of the glue. Once we mix that up, we can put as much glitter as we want, they claim. Here's our slimy goop. They said it should feel like dough. It does feel like dough, but it also kind of reacts like putty, which means that it easily breaks. So unless their instructions are wrong, this is the consistency that we're getting. Time to see if it fits in here. Excuse me. Double excuse me. And this is what it looks like. So it does quite fit. And because I'm a person who likes to try things, I made a second batch with half the amount of activator and it's still acting pretty much the same way, which is extremely firm. So you're gonna have to excuse me again. I was good this time. And so here they are. Let's turn the lights off and see exactly what the fuss is about. All right, so here we are, lights on and the lights coming off right now. Oh wait, I probably should have turned them on first. Duh. Okay, I'm turning them on now, okay? There we go, and there we go. And here we go, this time for real. So I am actually pretty impressed. I know they're not top-notch decoration, but they are pretty cool. I mean, just look at the top here. It definitely can set the mood. And once the air bubbles disappear, this is going to be a lot more clear, so it's just going to be looking a lot better. And the decorations do show through. So is there enough material to make all four? The answer is yes. Does this deserve a one-star rating? No. I mean, if you have between 10 and $15 to spare, because I've seen this on clearance as well, I would say that this would be worth your cash if you're in the market for a slime candle. If you have other craft kits that I haven't tested out yet, make sure to leave them in the comment section below or tag me either on Twitter or Instagram. I love finding new ones and trust me, I know. I've seen that many of you grains have posted me on the new 
slime kit that is out. I won't, I won't say anything, but I'm picking it up. Don't worry, I got you covered. This week's shout outs go to Lil Longhorn, love this picture. Rose Muzin Art, who drew the picture of all of us when we were at VidCon, the art community. Gora Brittany, salty, looks very comfortable. Pokari Roo, who drew the Sophia Bat Dragon. And yes, it is the Pokari Roo. Vic Claude and Cami B. Remember, if you want to shout out in my videos, they are random now. Make sure you hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch another Cash or Trash, make sure you check it up here. And if you want to watch a video that YouTube thinks is just right for you, make sure you check it out down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.